it's life. Our water, water is life. And if we don't start addressing the issues that are currently occurring, the crisis that we find ourselves in, that water won't be able to provide life like it does today, like it did a thousand years ago. We will be at that point where we've gone too far. The Elk Valley is one of the most beautiful places you could imagine. This is a special place. If things continue as business as usual as it is now, unfortunately, uh, over the next uh, several decades, we'll see a continuing decline in the health of the river, the functionality. It will not look good. We will lose the things that we value. I see unprecedented traffic. I see increased development for land in, uh, you know, subdivisions. I see uh, the trails are a lot busier, the rivers are busier, the mines have grown. We have currently four large open pits. We also have extensive logging um, in the valley and really rapid um, logging activities over the last, I'm going to say, 10 years um, that are really excessive. In a nutshell, we have to think holistically. Indigenous knowledge holders will be saying the same thing. You, you think as of the system as completely interconnected. Making a decision, one isolated decision, thinking, well, it's okay because it's not going to really have a major effect. It's just one small, let's say, for example, additional addition to the size of this cut block, or it's one small subdivision. But we need to zoom out from that and understand how that connects with everything else we're doing and whether we're uh, getting to the situation where we're maxing out the ability of the system to absorb everything that we're doing. Our people um, have the term which translates to basically all living things and what that means is um, everything has life, everything has a soul from the trees to the rocks to the plants to the ground to the air to the water it all has a soul, so it all has purpose, it all has a meaning, and it is all connected. Ecosystems are an interconnected web of land, water, air, wildlife, plants, uh, aquatic life, and of course humans. And it's without functioning ecosystems, there can be no humans. I think we need to have a healthy economy and a healthy environment. It shouldn't be a trade-off of either or, that we have you know, a healthy economy and we just mess up the environment. Or we just protect the environment and people lose well-paying, secure jobs. I mean, you, you can't have, I don't think anybody wants either of those scenarios. They want both of those scenarios. So that should be our priority moving forward. Balance is, is the key, and balance is the key to basically everything uh, from uh, an indigenous perspective. In order, to, in order for us to exist and continue to exist, and it's all about balance. The way to tip the scale in a good direction so the Elk River becomes a success story. Number one, understanding our current status, what the top risks are, and then doing something about it. Scientists are here to help us understand the trends. We're here to identify the mechanisms by which humans affect um, a watershed and help decision makers identify where action is needed and what kind of action is needed. I see water monitoring as the fundamental step in the stewardship of our watershed. Right now at this creek, uh, we are doing our community-based water monitoring. 
um, where we use cabin-based protocols to perform aquatic habitat assessments in a standardized, uh, like nationally recognized way. The whole point is to, I guess, get the community involved. Um, so the sites that we pick are primarily areas of community concern. And uh, when we go out and do the work, ideally we train and have community members um, involved in the actual field portion. We're measuring the slope um, of the area, take water chemistry samples um, and physical parameters. Things like the amount of sediment in the water, metals, nutrients, dissolved oxygen, pH, the temperature of the water. We measure water volume going through a creek. We do kick netting as part of our cabin protocols. So we look for stoneflies, caddisflies, and mayflies as general indicators of good stream health. Um, and then when we notice like midges or worms or leeches that's generally if those are taken over it's a sign that our streams are not as great as they could be. We input that all into the government cabin database uh, and it kind of uses a model for our area to compare our site to other sites that are similar um, have similar, similar characteristics uh, but are considered pristine um, and then it kind of spits out a, a grade telling us what condition our sites are in um, based on like how divergent they are from these pristine reference sites. Community-based mo water monitoring is one of the keys to building trust and accountability because if citizens are out in the watershed collecting data and filling gaps in information and they're sharing it with other citizens and their findings with decision makers, and everybody's included in the conversation of what is the health, what are the issues and concerns, what are the potential solutions going forward, we can build a relationship of collaboration, coordination and trust. And that's what we need to make better decisions. Now we have the technology, we have um, the science, that can go together with our teachings that we have from our elders, our grandparents, by being able to understand um, our ways as well as us understanding your ways, that um, we will be able to see in both worlds that one vision, and we will be able to understand how to put our finger on the pulse of that river using our teachings and your technologies. Each of us own our own responsibility for understanding the effect we have as individuals and as a society on this precious ecosystem that we have here. And it comes back to communication and, and conversations with each other and really sorting out what are the most important things we need to be working together on. We need to have industry, we need to have citizens, we all need to lean into this together. and and show that this is possible. And that's what I hold on to. We have a lot of places around here people consider unique. And you gotta take that word, and you gotta think about what that word means, unique. And that word means that it's one of a kind, that it can't be duplicated. So everything that we see that's going on today is taking that uniqueness away. And it's when it's gone, it's gone forever. There's no putting it back, no replacing it, no making another one like it. It's gone, it's gone forever. And that's what our ancestors would tell us, that we need to take care of this because when it's gone, it'll be gone forever. It's not really, I would say, personal, but more of an uh, obligation that uh, we as um, Tunacha have with the Creator, our covenant with the Creator to protect, protect the land as uh, long as we are here. <laughs>